So it's really hard to look at someone and see what they quote manifested and then compare it to yourself and go, oh, I must be doing it wrong. It doesn't, it's never going to happen for me. No, they're a completely different soul. They're on a completely different soul journey, a completely different trajectory. You cannot compare the two. Patty, welcome to Shifting Dimensions. It's so good to have you here. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. It's lovely to speak with you. For those of you tuning in, Patty is an energy healer, author, and spiritual advisor. And Patty, part of the reason I'm super excited to speak with you today is because a lot of the work that you do around energy healing and advising people spiritually centers around the Akashic records. Yes. And if I could explain the Akashic records in layman terms, I kind of think of them as like the soul, the soul's library. So every individual's, I guess, different lives or things that they've experienced on a soul level or how far their soul has traveled or how many times they've reincarnated. That's kind of where we go with the Akashic Records to kind of figure all of that out. Yeah. So, um, so I really want to talk to you today about soul originations and soul blueprints and soul gifts and all of that stuff, because a lot of your work really enters those touches on those categories, right? Absolutely, yes. Um, but first, I want to learn more about you. How did you get into the work of energy healing and being a <laughs> spiritual advisor? Oh my gosh, that's a, <clears throat> a whole conversation in itself. Um, you know, I, I tell people that I really never set out to be an energy healer. I mean, I always thought it was cool and fun. And, you know, when I was young, I'd see psychics and mediums and but I never, ever thought that it could be a legitimate career. And I never, you know, I, I didn't grow up in an environment where that sort of thing was encouraged. It's like, well, you know, you go to college, you get a good desk job, <laughs> push a lot of papers around, you stay at one place for a while and you retire, that's it. And so it was just never in the sphere of any kind of conversation. So um it really all started uh, back in 2007 uh, when I was diagnosed with breast cancer, okay? And uh, it was a very pivotal moment. And I think anyone that probably gets a diagnosis like that will can probably relate to the fact that it's a pivotal moment, right? It's a wake up call. And <clears throat> so I, I like to say that up until then, I really was not living my authentic self. Um, I was very much a people pleaser. I was very nervous. I just want everyone to like me. So I kind of would just be who I thought everyone wanted me to be. Um, a lot of like my clients who come to see me today, I was misaligned, right? And um, that takes a lot of energy actually to stay misaligned. It's exhausting. And, and we can talk about that. But um, <clears throat> at some point, um, you know, when, when you're misaligned and you don't use your energy for its highest good, um, it will ultimately reflect in the physical body blueprint, which we'll talk about. Um, because everything gets reflected there and you open yourself up to disease and chronic conditions and ailments later in life, the more misaligned you are. It's not an automatic, but it is definitely a strong potential for that when you misuse your energy and not use it for your highest good. So mine for me, um, it manifested as breast cancer and um, I, in many ways, I was not surprised by that diagnosis. Um, uh, but I, it, again, it, it kind of didn't, it, it didn't scare me. It, it was like a wake up call. I like, this is my chance. This is my chance to change my life for the better. I've been talking about it. Now I have to take some action and how am I going to do that? And <clears throat> so, and I had two young kids at the time. I had a one-year-old and a three-year-old. Um, I, you know, I wanted to have a career. So to me, it was like, I need to have something that's mine. That was what my soul was calling for. And I'm like, but I have this career I had before, but it's not really what I want to do. So I had to do some soul searching. It's like, well, what, what is it? What's going to turn me on? What's going to align with me and make me feel really aligned? And the one thing that I really tuned into was um, aesthetics and skincare. So I actually zeroed in 
on becoming a skincare entrepreneur. And so I went back to school, I opened my own business and within a month of opening, I was introduced to energy healing in a really bizarre way. <clears throat> and you know, that's how the universe works. When, when you least expect it, something kind of comes in out of left field. And so I always tell my clients, you know, you gotta follow that because you know, the universe can't interfere with your free will. I can't say Patty, go be an energy healer, but it can put you in a position of meeting one and let you make that decision for yourself. Right. And so I decided to go to this last minute networking meeting and I, I really didn't want to go, but I have to go. And I met an energy healer and it completely changed my life because I didn't know what energy healing was. I'd never heard of it. Um, it happened to be in the form of Reiki, which I didn't know what that was, <clears throat> but it just blew me away. I, I was so um, changed by that one session I had with this energy healer. And I just knew it's like this knowing I have to add this to what I do I, I I've already got someone in this beautiful peaceful place why would I not want to do energy healing so I uh, I sought out training in Reiki and I started offering it and really it just grew from there and over time I had people that started to come to me more for energy work than the skincare and I really had to make a decision right? and so after a, a lot of consideration I decided to sell off the skincare portion and focus strictly on energy work and that's where it just it took another level right it's like okay I got into it then it just my book started filling up and I just ran with this intuition that I didn't know I had. I had information just coming to me. And, you know, there's a lot of trust when you have your intuition, right? especially when you're working with people. I'm telling them stuff. Right. But I kept getting confirmation that I was on the right track. So that built my confidence and stuff over time. And then at some point, and I'm condensing a lot of you know years here, but at some point I when I had a client on the table, I recognized that the issues that they were dealing with today actually started in a past life. And that was the first. I'll never forget. I, I, I know the person and the time, the moment and everything. But I thought, this is new. So I have to study this. And um, I did a lot of reading and a lot of research. And that's when I came upon the term Akashic Records, which is the record of the soul. And I said, that's what I got to do. <laughs> I just knew it. And, and so I, I went that direction and sought out mentors and, and did some training and the rest is history. And, and that's what I've decided to focus my career on for the last, I think, eight to 15, 14, 15 years I've been doing this. So I was very much directed um, into it. Um, and, and, and I think it aligns really well with how I teach abundance and how you put yourself on a path energetically to your abundance by aligning to your gifts and letting it flow and and not fighting the outcomes but just allowing what comes in because the universe knows what you need and in what order in order to be successful and um, i just allowed it and uh, it has taken me places i never would have imagined myself what an incredible story, Patty. So it, it's interesting because you get this insight and you, 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 like you said, you had this huge interest in skincare. Yeah. And that led you down a path of energy healing and, and event tap into the Akashic records. It's very fascinating how we're living life a certain way and then something so dramatic and devastating happens to us. Yes. to kind of course correct, because obviously there is a purpose in the work that you're doing. This is what you're meant to do. This is this aligns with your soul gifts and I'm sure your soul blueprints, were, which we're gonna get into. So it's yeah. very fascinating how that all happened for you and you learning to trust and listen to your intuition and go to that networking meeting and, and meeting yeah. that person that introduced you to energy healing is just the little whispers and the the redirection. And sometimes, again, tragic things happen to us because yeah. if we're not listening to the guidance that we're supposed to be listening to or listening to our higher self, I think sometimes it's kind of like that speed bump <laughs> to make you oh, stop. Yes. 
oh, and, yeah. and pay attention. <clears throat> when when you're supposed to be doing something else and you're not heeding that, the universe will come in and just smack you upside the head, how, yeah. as I like to say it, through either a, a trauma, a crisis, um, um, losing that job, um, having that person break your heart. I mean, it's you're meant to go in another direction. And if you don't do it on your own, <laughs> or when it's time, karmically speaking, for something to take place, you're going to go there. Yeah. And um, it, and it was funny because it was just kind of a knowing. Once I decided to take my power back by saying, look, I I love being a mom, and but but I need something else. And I stopped apologizing for that and started just following my heart. And I'm like, you know, with the, the person I was with at the time, you know, I just said, hey, I, I need this. And, and I'm okay if you're not on board with this, which was huge for me. I mean, I never did anything like that. And I, you do get rewarded from the universe by taking that courage and taking that brave next step. Cause you know, you don't know what's going to happen. I had no idea if I was going to be happy, successful, if my, you know, what was going to happen, but I just knew where I was, was not going to take me where I wanted to go. Yeah, what did I have to lose? <laughs> yes. What do you have to lose? Life really yeah. is an adventure coming from someone who can really identify with the needing to please. Oprah yeah. calls it the disease to please. And just always making decisions where you're putting yourself last, hoping everybody likes you. That's right. not a sustainable way to live life. And, you know, I've worked with you now um, a couple of times and we've we've had many conversations prior to this. I'm really grateful that you were able to step into your purpose because you know, I, I'm benefiting from it. And a lot of your other, you know, clients and, and people that you work with are really benefiting from this. And I'm sure you're benefiting from it in your life. As oh, well. yes. So, oh, yeah. Thank you for your <laughs> I mean, work. There's always something in it for me um, to pick up. Um, you know, I think a lot of my clients are where I was. I just think that's my sweet spot is helping people where, where I was a few steps behind. And it's funny how even when I have weeks where things are happening, I'll have clients come in that week that, you know, and they booked a while ago, but whatever. And it's like, oh, my God, this is like so meant for me. You know, I got a message for her, but, it, you know, I'm taking something from it as well. So it's it's the universe is always working on our behalf, even if we think things are falling apart, even if we think, you know, life is happening to us, which it doesn't. Uh, we do divinely choose it. Um, but it's always happening for our highest good. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And, and with that, I want to kind of segue in now into this concept of soul origination, because uh -huh. part of who we are, I think at our core, is, is really our soul. Our soul is kind of one of the highest guiding forces for what we're supposed to be learning in this life, what we're supposed to be tapping in, into, how we're supposed to be using our gifts. And something that I've come across recently, and I think I heard it from you first, is this concept of soul originations. And that blew my mind. I'm like, soul origination? What does that <laughs> even mean? Don't we all come from the same place? We have different origins. So could you please describe the concept of soul originations? Sure. And are there different categories of souls well yeah I, so so <clears throat> the soul and, and again this is just from from my teachings and from my perspectives um the soul was created by source to experience itself and in different realms and so immediately we we are to answer your earlier comment i we all come from the same place. We all are created by source because source wants to experience itself. And so we are immediately need to recognize that we all are of source, whether you call that God or um, Allah or whatever you want to call it. Um, there is one um, overall entity that has created each of us. So we are of the reflection of source. Source is within us. 
So that's one really important thing to note. And then after source creates the soul, the soul then has free will um, to choose. And so it will immediately choose a soul group to align to. And it will usually um, you know, be one that it feels most vibrationally in alignment. And it will start to take on the attributes and characteristics of that soul group and bring those into its incarnations. And that starts to become what we refer to as its soul gifts. Um, <clears throat> but a lot of these soul um, uh, sources of origination, after the soul is created, it could be, you know, other planets, other star systems, other dimensions. Um, there are souls everywhere. And um, so that's really what I refer to as the soul groups of origination. Um, but I've kind of drilled down even further to that because, you know, that gets into the galactic aspect of things and star seeds and a lot of these terms. And to me, being the ever practical one, it's like, well, it's really cool to think I'm a star seed or I am from Arcturus or I'm from Orion or the Pleiades or wherever, you know, a lot of these are. It's like, well, what do I do with that? You know, what? Okay. It's cool to know. So, <clears throat> You know, what I've created is something that I call the manifesting archetypes. And uh, over the years of me doing this work, I've found that there's these four broad categories or archetypal uh, aspects that people tend to fall into. And of course, they're very broad um, and they're meant to be broad. And so I really focus on the attributes of that particular archetype and I have this quiz on my website. You know, you can go take it, pattyoliver.com, and go take the quiz. Um, and you'll find which broad category you tend to fall into. And with all the years of doing readings, I have yet to see it not correlate with their soul gifts when I enter their Akashic record. Um, the only time that that has happened to a certain degree is when people are utterly misaligned and just not allowing themselves to be their true nature. Um, or sometimes they're aligned in one area of their life, but not in the others. Like they're really authentic when they're at work, but when they get home, they're like, okay, they put themselves away and then they start the people pleasing and everything else. And then they're, they're, they're inauthentic. So there's this incongruence. I've seen both of those. And <clears throat> when we work through those from a karmic perspective, people, start to see it's like wow i really have not been my authentic self um but that's how i approach the concept of soul origination very interesting and i actually have a question related to the manifestation archetypes and i guess yep. we can get into the different categories sure but you know on this the soul origination piece with what you were kind of talking about people talk about being star seeds, being from different planets or di from different constellations. I hope that's the right word. Mm -hmm. um, it's interesting how you described it. And I've also heard it described like this before, where it's, again, we all come from source, yes. but then we all kind of tag ourselves into different soul groups. And yes. we're technically all originated from source, but we are, we align ourselves with specific groups and I've heard people break down the groups into three things um earth based souls interplanetary souls so I guess that's yeah. the star seeds in different constellations and then an angelic souls mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. makes me think is that done because each different category of soul originations are we supposed to have different qualities that allow us to use specific gifts towards some level of growth. Yes. I, I don't know I, if that makes yes. sense. I do believe because, you know, we, when we, when we come into the physical world um, and, and we put on this thing called a body so that the soul can, can transverse the earth and, and have its experience. Um, 
we, we all are meant to contribute something to the collective. Um, this is, um, you know, I, I've, in my work on karmic and universal law, um, there's a karmic law of significance and inspiration, which means basically states, we are all here for a purpose. Uh, there is nothing random about you being here and we all have something to contribute. And we, we find that, which is our purpose, because a lot of times I get asked, what's my purpose? Your purpose is to express yourself through your gifts, right? What brings you joy? Um, what comes naturally to you that is easy, that flows to you? Again, and, and different soul groups or manifesting archetypes, as I refer to them, have different strengths. Now, it's, it, it doesn't mean that you can't do other things, but there's certain attributes that you are just going to be so aligned to and co so come, come so easy and naturally to you that when you choose to use those, that's where you're going to find your easiest form of abundance. Now, and I say that because, you know, there's there's many ways to find abundance here um, on earth. Uh, one way is through sheer will. <laughs> you can force something if you want, but that's exhaustive. And oftentimes we have to use negative aspect. And I'm not, it's not judgmental. It's just non-gifts, right? It's misalignment. But we, we have to do it in a way which is very depleting and a lot of hard work. Or you could do it through soul alignment, right? Through that um, that authentic self-expression that comes easily and, and naturally to you. And, and that's my goal uh, when I try to work with people on on their abundance. It's like, let's identify what your gifts are first. And are you using them? Because that's your purpose. Okay. And so you have to be strong in something. And so different soul groups have different natural strengths that they bring to the table um, that you want to use. And it's been given to you purposefully for you to use any way you want to create your abundance. Mm -hmm. I, I'm curious because I, I want to know if I was listening to this, I'd be curious to know and if, if you can answer this question, what are some telltale signs that someone is an interplanetary soul or an angelic soul or an earth-based soul? Are there specific characteristics that kind of scream, yeah. okay, yeah, this is kind of where I'm from? There are some, some general characteristics. It's not like there's no crossover. Mm -hmm. See, that's where, because sometimes it can get a little confusing. It's like, well, but I identify with this, but I also identify with that, right? It's like, there's usually, it's just like the manifesting archetypes. I tell people, well, you definitely, we're, we're, we're probably all four at different times in our life, but there's one dominant feature that you want to lead with most of the time. And, and that's what we talk about here. So, I, you know, souls from the angelic realm, they tend to possess those very, um, well, angelic like qualities they're um they're always looking at the best in people they really don't understand the nature of of war and harming one another and um they really embrace ideas of togetherness and divine love and reverence and all of these beautiful angelic qualities that we might align it doesn't mean that the other soul groups don't have that but but the angelic realm i mean that's like their core essence Right. They, they just can't be any other way. Whereas souls from, you know, maybe Mars. Right. If your soul group originated from Mars, you know, Mars is a very warlike civilization when it was in existence. Uh, these are the the soldier like <laughs> people that uh, very aggressive, very ambitious type souls. You will often find um, that identify with like. Mars. Um, Pleiadians is a star system, right? And these Pleiadians are very, um, very highly spiritual people. Um, and they um, have a lot of gifts of um, expression and bringing communities together. And they're very um, high conscious, highly evolved conscious souls that can pull people together in groups of people in ways that maybe the other um, types of 
soul groups aren't as strong as. It doesn't mean they can't, but they aren't as strong at it as someone like the Pleiadian souls. And they also have character. They're very verbal. They're very expressive in nature. So it's funny, you know, again, over time of doing the work, when you, if you study this, you start to know pretty much pretty quickly. It's like, oh, I, I think I can probably without them taking the, the quiz or me going into their Akashic record, I can probably identify. It's like any other career, right? You start to yeah. identify that pretty quickly. So yes, to answer your question, yeah. There's a pattern. Do you, yeah. are there characteristics for earth-based souls? Cause I've heard about those ones as well. Earther souls, as I would call them. Yeah, you know, um, earther souls tend to be very in touch with their physical aspect of life. Um, they tend to, love, um, you know, all the physical things like they love, you know, good food and they love to sleep and they love their physical surroundings to just be comfy and cozy. And, um, and they tend to be very, um, uh, anything that's, that's related to the physical realm, such as, you know, these people are like the shop, the chefs or the builders or the dancers or anything that requires a lot of physicality in their day-to-day -day aspect tend to usually have their basis as a, uh, their origination as an earth or soul. That makes a lot of sense. So mm -hmm. I think it's cool that you kind of took the concept of soul originations and made it more practical by kind of creating or infusing them in manifestation archetypes. Yeah. Because I had, I just thought manifestation was manifestation. I just thought, Ah. It kind of works the same way for everyone. So oh, in speaking no. with you, when you mentioned manifestation archetypes, I'm like, what are those? So right. could we just, first of all, how did you know to do that? What made you decide to kind of <laughs> take what you were doing with the Akashic Records, looking into people's different soul originations to being like, actually, there's a pattern here of how people in these different groups or people with these specific soul characteristics or blueprints can actually manifest in a specific way. It just came to me. You know, I, uh, I, again, I think like I, I think when I first talked about it, I'm like ever, ever practical Patty, I just really wanted to bring it well down to earth, right? It's like, what, what are the practical attributes um, that I tend to see that are very consistent, that would be actually very helpful and um, applicable for people to use immediately uh, rather than, well, I'm, I'm, you know, from the star system or whatever. It's like, I, I just, I like usable, practical information. And, and that actually fits my manifesting archetype. I'm the teacher advisor. And um, I'm like that. I am that way. And it's funny because sometimes you get a little bit of archetypal envy, you know, <laughs> I'm like, I'm the teacher archetype. I really wanted to be something else. But, you know, I have been told for years that I'm a teacher. And I'm like, really? I'm a teacher archetype? No, I don't want to. But, you know, it's it's what I always end up doing. Uh, whether it's an individual one-on-one, -on -one, um, it ends up always being a teaching moment. And again, it's not that the ar other archetypes don't do that. It's just it's just what comes naturally to me. And once I allowed myself to put myself in a position where I could do that, it didn't really shine for me. I wasn't, I, I just wasn't putting myself in a position. And, and then I always was wondering like, well, wh wh where do I fit in? And what is my strength? And I know what I like, but is it really is? I mean, I was always very confused. Once the universe put me there, on the trajectory of the energy healing, and then I move through that, I just can't not be who I am at soul level, which is the teacher advisor archetype. To me, I don't know. I mean, it's just something that emanated naturally from, from my work and just wanting to refine the information I provide people. So what are the different archetypes? You just talked about the teacher ar archetype. You said that there were four archetypes. Yeah, that I, you know, and again, this is kind of my creation. So there's the teacher yeah. advisor, the visionary leader, the expressionist creator, and the sensitive feeler. When you talk about the manifestation archetype, so you being the teacher, you have to kind of, you do you manifest quicker when you're in positions to be a teacher or to offer guidance? Do you manifest those things faster? The thing about manifesting 
Manifesting is really all about alignment and frequency and vibration. Okay. And so when you choose to allow yourself to align to your soul gifts, I think this is answering your question. Yeah. You start to make more aligned choices. You start clearing your karma, which is working against you. And you align more and more to who you are at soul level. You raise your vibration. And then as you raise in your vibration, that's how new people, situations, and circumstances can flow into your space. You attract them into your space by being your divine self. So yes, <laughs> to answer your question, I just think there's a little bit more to it. I mean, <clears throat> um, and maybe that's because I think about it all day, every day. But yes, when you align to your soul gifts, you know, I was listening to um, Tony Robbins, right? I love Tony Robbins, great energy, great person. You know who, who, who he is, right? Yeah, I know who he is. Yeah. And he, and I just happened to click on one of his talks one day, of course, nothing, nothing is, you know, a coincidence, but yeah, um, I mean, he was talking very similar. He, he said, when you want to manifest abundance, I think that's the terms he used. He says, you want to align to your nature. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> Yes, that's that's what I'm getting to. He says, because when you align to your nature, it, it, that's when the ease comes in and the flow. He says, you know, you can't force something that doesn't come naturally to you. And, and you can. It's just a lot harder way. And it's it, it, it takes a lot more energy and it's 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 very depleting. So it's like, it, you know, if you're the teacher advisor, the dang it, be the teacher advisor. Don't be the expressionist creator. You know, I mean, it's not that you can't. But it's just going to be way easier. This is the gift you've been given. This is how you're meant to express your essence. And when you do that, oh, it's just alignment and ease. And so then with manifesting, I hope I'm kind of going off here. I hope you're okay with that. Yeah, you're good. You're good. Okay. Go um, you know, manifesting is about clearing your karma first. And I, I teach this in my other course on karmic and universal law. It's like the thing about manifesting the law of attraction, that I think this is seriously missing in those teachings is karma because karma is simply the energy of choices that you've made in past lives that didn't align to you, that didn't serve your soul growth and wasn't balanced out in the lifetime in which it was created. And the thing about sometimes a lot of our old karmic patterns is we were forced into them. You know, that was then, this is now, you know, especially females or especially people in lower class at the time or whatever, we were forced into a lot of negative choices because my goodness, you could lose your life if you didn't, right? Well, we don't live like that now, but it still represents a choice that you're still doing that needs to be balanced out in this lifetime. So you're just going to get your karma in modern times. So you will always be attracting your karma first in an effort to clear it before you can truly attract and maintain the thing that you're striving for, your ultimate manifestation. And that's why a lot of people will think, I'm not doing it right. Look what's showing up. I must be doing it wrong. And then they stop. And it's like, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> it's just your karma, right? So so you have to clear that first. Um, so so say, you know, you're you're trying to move up in in, in the um in your career, right? Well, maybe you have some financial issues that you need to um, overcome first. And then you're giving your power away in your relationship. You're like the ultimate doormat. Well, that's not going to get you higher levels, right? You've got to balance that out. And these are all these really hard choices that we never want to make because they're hard. But if you don't, it's going to be really hard, if not impossible, to get the ultimate manifestation that you desire. So <clears throat> we talk about, you know, you use your archetype your gifts to put yourself on the road to abundance and you start making more aligned choices, you know, fixing those financial karmic patterns, um, saying goodbye to those relationships that don't support your empowerment, um, stopping the people pleasing, right. And just being, uh, giving that risk of being your authentic self, even though you might lose somebody, right. You know, they need to go. 
we just don't want to do, you know? And then as you do that, it's like the universe just keeps giving you more and more and more. And you're like, wow, you know, it's almost like, so, so, so you shift right from wondering, you know, it's like, how do I tackle this to, I wonder what's going to show up, right? You, you shift from knowing that you can handle what's coming to, well, I can't wait to, wait to see what shows up as a result. It's a really fun place to get to. You said a lot, Patty, just to make sure I fully understand. So it sounds a lot like the manifestation archetypes at their core kind of touch on a person's true nature, which yeah. kind of ties in with soul originations, which really, yes. again, ties into someone's true nature or essence, which mm -hmm. is very cool because I never thought of manifestation like that. And I think to some degree, the law of attraction manifestation, there are general things that we can all apply yeah. within ourselves, but it seems like these manifestation archetypes are more to kind of point people in the direction of their authenticity because yeah. you manifest. I mean, we want to manifest um, a life that is true to us because we're constantly manifesting all the time, but we don't want to yeah. manifest in the wrong direction. We want to manifest in alignment with our, our soul blueprint and soul gifts, correct? Yes. Well, and I don't think you can manifest in the wrong direction. See, and that's where... Interesting. Um, it's just a different perspective. And see, that's what I'm saying is that, like, say you want to manifest a new romantic partner. Okay. okay. And, you know, and you, you, however, law of attraction coaches like to teach it, you know, your vision boards and your affirmation and all that's important. I'm not, I'm not dissing that, but it's important, but it's certainly not everything because <clears throat> let's say that you, you, you have this perfect, perfect, perfect person in mind, yet you have these horrible limiting beliefs about yourself and terrible self-worth. Well, those are karmic patterns that you need to overcome first, because that doesn't align to this higher frequency um, aligned love that you're looking for. It, you, you just can't, you won't get there. Or if you do get there, you can't keep it because you haven't matched the frequency of that which you ultimately desire. And so the universe, either you're going, to, and, and that's why it's like, you have to be willing to start with where you're at and everyone's at a different journey and you can't tell by looking at somebody where they're at in their karmic journey. So it's really hard to look at someone and see what they quote manifested and then compare it to yourself and go, Oh, I must be doing it wrong. It doesn't, it's never going to happen for me. No, they're a completely different soul. They're on a completely different soul journey, a completely different trajectory. You cannot compare the two. Okay. Um, and so I think you're going to manifest what's appropriate vibrationally for you and the sky's the limit but you have to go through your karma first in order to maintain that thing that you say you desire well that's it's, okay i hear what you're saying but it's a little scary though because then i think if i manifest something that <laughs> brings negative experience to my reality that means obviously there's still some potential blocks and and karma yeah. that i need to to work through but yeah. uh, I, I don't like experiencing those things. <laughs> and then it makes me think, do I have to be perfect? But it, it's not, it's, I don't no. think you're saying we have to be perfect and completely clear out everything. I, again, I, I think the key word here is authenticity. Yeah. We yeah. know when something's misaligned. We know when yes. we are trying to people please, or we know when we're doing things because we feel like it's going to look good in the eyes of other people versus what we actually want to do in our soul and in our hearts. So, or what we want to accomplish in our soul or in our hearts. So I, I agree with you. And, you know, it's like, if you can maintain, see, this is one of the things I, I teach in my course, because I, I, I teach people how to access your own Akashic record to do this, is it's all about mindset. And it's all about, and, it, and it, there's a lot of talk around mindset, right? Uh, but it's, but it's very, very true. Because if you can develop a mindset of, well, I'll just get that out of my way and move on to the next thing. I mean, it's like, if you do attach too much to what's happening as a, a personal failure or here we go again. I mean, I, I can tell you right now that, you know, it's, 
there's no end to the universe wanting you to up level, right? It's, it's you yourself who's going to stop yourself from up leveling. Um, so when you can just say, look, I just got to, and, and I think this is one of the great things about doing the spiritual work and seeing what's possible. It's like, I just got to get that out of my way. It's just, you know, the one little blip and I'm going to get on with it. And then something else is going to come in. That's more aligned. That's higher vibration. Um, and the faster you can do that and the more you can disconnect from the emotional aspect of it and just move through it and know that it's something you've got to get through to get to your higher vibration, it's just, it's all mindset. You're um, absolutely right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we all have karma. We can't get away from the karma. Um, but th what, what makes us all different is how, you know, how diligent are you? How self-empowered do you allow yourself to be? How good are you at making aligned decisions and not letting anything or anyone hold you back? Um, that's where we all differ. And when you can align to your gifts, um, kind of going back to your other comment about, well, I don't want to manifest the wrong thing. It's like, well, it's like if, if I'm this teacher archetype, but I always had a dream of being an artist, but I don't really have that gift. It's not that I can't be an artist and it's not that I can't enjoy doing artwork, but it, it might be a lot more of an uphill challenge for me to get there than if I embraced my true gift, which was this. And so when I work with someone on manifesting something, I make sure that what they're wanting to manifest actually aligns to them. You know, is this even possible according to your Akashic record for you to get where you want to go? Um, most of the time, the answer is yes, but I've, I have encountered a few times where it's like, no, no, not in this, not at least not in this 12 month period. We have to get over this and this and this, and then this is more of an alignment with this person. And again, we know that you, you touched on that. It's like, I think we know intuitively when we're misaligned or when there's karma that we just really don't want to deal with it. <laughs> So we avoid it and then we wonder why we aren't growing. Yeah. And just so for, for I think most people listening to this might have a good sense of what karma is, yeah. but karma is not necessarily if I kick you, then someone's going to end up kicking me because right. I kicked you. But karma is a lot deeper than that and has to do with lessons and yes our history, our soul's history, et cetera, and just different karma comes from different lifetimes as well. So it's not yeah. just in a particular lifetime that we're living in. Yeah, I mean, there's a whole lot on, on that whole subject, but but ultimately, yes, karma is not punitive in nature. It, it's not happening to you, it's happening for you because you come in because again, source wants to experience itself and all that there is and source wants to be you to feel empowered. And so, as you gain your in your empowerment, which means you might have chosen lessons for yourself in this lifetime that are we might all look at as a little bit rough. But we don't, you know, until we get into the karmic history of it, it's like, well, this is why you chose it. This is why you're experiencing it. And this is how you overcome it so that you clear this karma once and for all. It's there to teach you that your results in your life are a direct related directly related to the choices you make positive or negative and you have absolute power at any moment to change the trajectory of your choices you're not mm. stuck with anything and that also wasn't always true in our history right so we live in a time now where we have you know more freedoms than we ever have uh, for for most of us in the world, um, and especially as uh, women, um, and we can make new empowered choices. We just have to actually do it. Yes, you're absolutely spot on. Mm -hmm. I have an interesting question. I mm -hmm. I'm of the belief that when we're trying to manifest something, sometimes we manifest things that are very close to what we're looking for. Mm -hmm. um, or they have an element of something that we need, but we're not necessarily 
asking for in our manifestation. And sometimes the universe will bring certain things into our frame of consciousness so that we know to add this as part of what we're trying to manifest in or to kind of show us that what we're trying to manifest is possible. Do you agree with that or am I making that up? Yeah. No, I, uh, well, manifesting is, is not a solo act. Um, that's the other thing. I mean, it's individual, but we cannot manifest without working in conjunction with the universe. Right. And so we're always in co-creation. So say you put out an intention, right? I want to earn a hundred thousand dollars in the next 12 months, uh, doing podcasting, (laughs) you know, whatever your intention is. Right. And, and you want to be clear, right? If you're not clear, then you're going to get really unclear results. So then the universe says, ah, okay, Jimmy's put out an intention. What can we do to make this happen? And, you know, it, it's just, they're just waiting, you know, your guides are just waiting. And so <clears throat> first there might be some karma that you've got to clear. So they're going to send that your way. And then they might dangle an opportunity out here. So, so because you want to make X amount of dollars doing what you're doing, you have to have someone who's willing to step in and pay you that right? Whether it's a bunch of people or, or what, or what, how, whatever the opportunity looks like. So the universe has to go find you a match in terms of either customers or affiliates or how, whatever is involved in what you do to line you up to give you your desired manifestation. And that might come in bits and pieces as you raise in your vibration, um, that might come in a form of one big payoff here at the end that you've got to wait for because it depends, you know, the universe is okay. Well, we got to go find match and that can take a while, right? The third dimension is very slow. And so that's why it'll send you your karma first. Then it'll send you a little bit of some kind of something you look for to make sure that's what you want. And then here's the big payout, right? I mean, I'm kind of oversimplifying it, but, um, yeah, that that's how it works. Um, and you always have free will. You know, just because the universe delivers something doesn't mean that's the end or that's the final. I mean, the decision's always yours, but the universe is always sending you a match for where you're at right now for what you asked for. And what what are your thoughts on positive thinking? Because people always say, keep your mind positive when you're trying to manifest something. But the truth of the matter is some of the things that we try to manifest seem damn near impossible. So, of course, right. feelings of doubt come into play. Um, negative thoughts come into play. Is it really necessary to stay in a, in a mindset of positivity all the time yeah. while trying to manifest? I do. Well, and and it depends on how you define positive mindset. And I do talk about this in my course as well, because we can't be positive all the time, right? It's not with the flow of life. There's going to be letdowns. There's going to be disappointments. There's going to be frustrations. There's just going to be days where you're just not feeling it, right? But it's how quickly can you switch that mindset to one that's actually going to serve you, right? That's what I think is more important. So if you have chronic negative thoughts about kind of going back to my other example about you want this great love, yet you have terrible self-worth problems, and it usually starts in the mind, right? It's all a mind game. You have to build up your self-worth. You have to build up a framework of mantras and affirmations to train your brain to start looking for higher vibrational outcomes. Right. And you do that by reminding yourself of your empowerment and your worth. And then you start treating yourself the way you want to be treated. And then over time, you train your energy body to align to people, situations and circumstances that improve your concept of your own self-worth, which ultimately needs to come from you anyway. If you look for for everybody else and you'll never raise. So it's that ability to turn a negative into a positive or turn a negative. It's not like you want to ignore the negative. Like if something negative happened, you want to acknowledge it. We don't want toxic positivity. (laughs) Toxic positivity is, oh, it's flowers and rainbows all day. You know, no. It's like, okay, this happened. This is how I'm going to turn it into an actionable positive. 
And this is how I'm going to be okay with the result. I mean, it's how your ability to be able to do that, I think, will dictate how successful and how quickly you can be successful at what it is that you want to manifest. Agree. I think, of course, negative thoughts come into play and sometimes that there might be doubt. But I think what you're saying, what I'm understanding, it's really about your vibration or energy matching what you're trying to call in the realm of romantic relationships. If you have zero self-worth, how are you going to attract, or even if you do attract someone who values you, you might not be able to hold on to it because you're not a vibrational match. So, and positive thoughts or, or thoughts related to self-worth will help you kind of reach that vibration or be able to up level in order to call in what you're looking mm-hmm. for. So they kind of go hand in hand, so I see what They definitely go hand in hand, right? Saying. Releasing em- emotional triggers that we have and then taking action on it. You know, it's one thing to think a positive thought, but then you've got to take action on it because yes. again, we're in the physical realm. So nothing really counts vibrationally until you actually do it. So getting to the point where you, you know, staying on this example of self-worth, once you get to a point where you start really aligning to this idea of, yes, I am worthy, then you start to take action that aligns to that. So that means that you have better boundaries, that you start saying no to people who aren't supporting your boundaries, that you start putting yourself first. That's where the congruence comes in. So it's one thing to think it, you must do it in order to make it real because the universe only goes to what's real. Uh, That's the law of correspondence is one of these things. It's like, well, what's it is just going to send you a match for, for what's, what's real. You're right. Mm -hmm. I think taking action is also embodying that version of yourself that attracts the thing that you're looking for. So if, if I want, I guess, more money. I'm not going to start spending recklessly to prove to the universe that I have more money, but maybe I might get better with money management because the more money you have, the more you have to manage how to manage your money and your funds. So I I agree with that. I kind of want to go back to soul originations a little bit. Just Mm -hmm. I have a question on that really quick. Sure. I think we kind of covered it a little bit, but I want to talk about the idea of blueprints and and soul Mm -hmm. gifts because as I'm thinking about it now, the manifestation archetypes, I'm kind of seeing a correlation between that and someone's soul blueprint. Yes. So so there is a blueprint at every level of our existence. And we exist in at least 10 dimensions all at once. They're all happening at the same time. And um, that that's also another form of alignment. It's aligning to your soul blueprints. Um, so you know, the first and second dimension don't affect us a whole lot here. That's more the uh, plants and mineral realm and stuff. But but we're third dimensional in nature because we have a physical body and we live here in the physical. So there's a physical blueprint and you affect that blueprint through the actions you ultimately take, right? And how aligned or misaligned. And then you rise up into your fourth dimensional aspect, which is your thoughts, and emotions are kind of in between those two. And, and the fourth dimension um, can be one of the most difficult ones for us to get through. We kind of talked about that, the whole mindset thing. It's like, how do I rise up past my ego and the chatter to my higher dimensional blueprint, which starts at our fifth dimensional blueprint, which um, is starts kind of the spiritual aspect of us. That's where the Akashic record lies, is at your fifth dimension. Um, and then you get up into higher and higher consciousness, so the sixth, the seventh, the eighth, ninth, and the tenth dimensions. So there's these blueprints are all stacked on top of one another, and we're always receiving energy, vital force energy from source while we're in a physical body. And the soul is always receiving that. And it has to come from source through all of our blueprints all the way down to us at the physical body level. And then what we do with our energy is up to us and our free will. 
right? We can make aligned choices or misaligned. So we increase our vital force energy when we make aligned or positive choices. We decrease our vital force energy when we make misaligned or negative choices. And so my work with the Akashic Records is all about aligning you with your free will thoughts at the fourth dimension and your free will actions at the third dimension with your fifth dimensional blueprint, because that's how you're going to maximize vital force energy. And a lot of those blueprints include information on how you're designed to respond to the world. And that's really what we're doing here on earth is we were, we're responding to everyone and everything all the time. Do we have an aligned response or do we have a misaligned response? And so um, once you're aware, because a lot of the times when we make negative or misaligned choices, it's just subconscious. We just, do it. We don't even think about it. And we're like, then we wonder why we're miserable. <laughs> right? So we talk about, well, this is the misaligned choices you're making. This is where your blueprint is, is off. And this is why you're low on energy. Right? Um, so when we bring in more vital force energy, and you align to your gifts, and you line up your free will thoughts and actions with your fifth dimensional and higher level consciousness blueprints, that's how you access more and more of your divine self, your divinity, your soul energy, however you want to describe it. And that's how you enhance manifestation. Is vital force energy the energy we use to create when we're yes. in alignment with our life? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I okay. mean, we're always receiving energy. That's how we're alive. Right? And, okay. and it comes in through our crown chakra and then uh, well, I can talk about chakras, but, but, you know, and it, it, that gets delivered to all the parts of the body that allow us to function and breathe and move. And, um, but, but it's up to us as individuals, how we want to use our energy. And some right. of us are not using it for our highest good. Other people are just killing it, right? They're just major forces to be contended with. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And it's interesting. I just had a mini epiphany in talking about soul blueprints, it kind of sounds very similar to a lot of the spiritual sciences that people use to understand themselves better, like astrology, yeah. human yeah. design. I think those kind of map out our soul blueprint, personality blueprints. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's a okay. lot of complementary work with, with those things you just mentioned. Um, yes. I, I think there's a lot of parallels. Um, I don't think one is any better than the other, but you might resonate with more with one than the other. My tool just happens to be the Akashic Records. I know some amazing people that I follow on social media that do astrology and human design. Just I think it's so cool. Yeah, um, it's also cool. It, it really is. And I think it's, I think we're all talking the same thing. It's just yes. which channel are you listening to? <laughs> <laughs> Which one resonates the most? Absolutely. Yes. The, the more I have these conversations, the more I'm like, oh, okay. We're yeah. all pretty much saying the same thing. I mean, yeah. I've looked into human design. I haven't gone too deep into yeah. astrology. I just kind of know the basics, my sun sign, moon sign, and rising. Yeah. But just from the little I touched astrology and looking at human design and talking about soul blueprints, I and even numerology, a lot of it, I, I'm seeing so many patterns. They're kind of yeah. telling me the same thing, but maybe in different languages. So it's all very interesting how everything is connected, but they all play a role. So sure. yeah, this this was a great conversation, Patty. I mean, honestly, we can go down <laughs> a million rabbit holes. Yeah, we could, we could. We, we literally could. But you, I will say one last thing, though. Uh -huh. What's so interesting about our conversation and with a lot of the conversations I've been having recently, this idea of authenticity keeps coming up. I know people have talked about authenticity before in the past. That's something that everyone says be authentic. Yeah. But I, I find it interesting that a, a lot of who we are at our core, at a soul level, at a higher dimensional level, really ties back to authenticity. So I, I, I think there's a there's a larger but simple story there. And I just find it fascinating that it, it just keeps coming back in a lot of these conversations that I'm I'm having. But this was a great conversation, Patty. Thank you so much for stopping by the Shifting Dimensions podcast. I love to end the episodes with something fun. Uh -huh. So I like to ask, what have you recently shifted in perspective? So it could be as simple as 
I used to love mint chocolate ice cream. Now <laughs> I don't love it, or it could be as deep as you want it to be. Oh my gosh. And, you know, it's a hard question because I think I've shifted so much since I've had a, uh, <clears throat> a personal epiphany about uh, three years ago. I've really shifted. I, I think overall, I used to think that I needed somebody in my life to make me feel complete. And I think that was ancestral related. I think that was part of my karma to overcome. And um, I, I went through a relationship shift, a very long-term relationship, relationship shift three years ago. And I have proven to myself that I don't, I don't need anybody. Um, I'm complete and whole as I am. And it's taken me almost 60 years on earth to <laughs> figure that out. See, even, you know, I do this for a living. And I still got struggle with those things, but I, I have recently come to that epiphany that I'm like, damn, I, I'm okay on my own. I, I don't need somebody. Uh, I, I would love to have a compliment, uh, you know, partner, but I don't need like I used to. And that is such a paradigm shift for me. That's an amazing shift and a shift I think more people need to have no shade to them or anything. But I think yeah. that's a profound, oh, yeah. profound paradigm shift that you've arrived yeah. at. Where can people find you if they want to learn more about you or check out your work or take the manifestation archetype quiz? <laughs> sure. It's on my website. It's pattyoliver.com. That's P-A-T-T-Y oliver.com. And um, you'll see it under there. I have a section called free resources um, and you can find a direct link to the quiz there. Um, it's also in the bottom part of the, the website. Um, but there's all kinds of information there. I've got my blog. I've got my course descriptions, um, my private coaching, uh, which I've just, it has filled up. So I've closed it down temporarily, but, but I do offer that. Um, yeah, and my Oracle card deck that I have. Awesome. Thank you, Patty, for stopping by Shifting Dimensions. Thank you for having me. It's been wonderful. <laughs>